Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Content Disposition HTTP header. So basically, this header allows you to inform the client what it should do with a particular resource. And in most cases, the client is going to refer to the web browser. So one of the most common use cases for this header is to force the download of a particular resource. So for example, uh, you may have seen it before where you have an image on a web on a website okay so something like this view image or uh, maybe you want to right click and press open a new tab and instead of the image uh, opening in the web browser itself um, it does something like this so I'm going to click on this image link right here and we can see instead of opening in a new tab it actually downloads the link directly and if I wanted to, to, um, to try and open it in a new tab we can see See, even if I try to, it still downloads automatically, um, you know, to my file system. So uh, this uh, this uh, functionality can be achieved using the content disposition um, HTTP header, and I'm going to be showing you how to achieve that. I do want to mention though that in most cases. Um, you can probably avoid using this header. It definitely has, um, you know, its particular scenarios and use cases. But uh, personally, myself, I think that um, it can be a bit confusing for other developers uh, reading and using your code, um, just because of the nature of how it actually works and uh, how it can easily be missed. So definitely uh, take care before using uh, this particular header. For your projects. So anyway, I'm going to be showing you how to use it of course. So let's go inside the text editor um, right here. We can see I've got this index.html file and we can see down here we have the link to view that image. Now, I am going to be showing you how I actually achieved that image download but first I want to show you the basics of how the content disposition header actually works. So for that I'm going to be showing a much simpler example. So essentially down here I'm going to make a new link and this link is going to generate um, a bunch of random numbers for me. So I'm going to say A right here, another anchor tag and this is going to go to dot forward slash uh, generate numbers dot PHP. So I'm going to be using PHP as my server side language. So now I can type in here something like uh, let's just make this download numbers and then in brackets put dot txt. So we can see here I've got this download numbers in a form of dot txt presented to the end user but this is linking to a PHP file. So uh, definitely with the content disposition header um, you can make this happen and actually force it to download a TXT file. So let's now create this generate numbers PHP file. So I'll make a new file right here and call this of course generate underscore numbers dot PHP. Inside here I'm going to open up the PHP script just like this and then I'm going to define a new array of numbers. So we can say numbers just like this equal to an array of random numbers. So I can do this by simply saying uh, rand, okay, something like zero and let's just say 20 for example, uh, during, uh, uh, between that range, okay. I can then just do the same thing. Let's just do this uh, another, another three times. So rand is 0, 020 and then uh, rand is 0, 020 once again. So now we have um, essentially an array of four random numbers. I'm going to now echo out, uh, join, and then pass in numbers, and then put uh, a comma as my delimiter. So now we have essentially uh, echoed to the browser uh, this array right here joined with a comma. I'm now going to save this and refresh the browser, click on this download link, and of course now we're going to see um, our particular uh, random string of numbers. So how do I convert this into a downloadable text file? It's really straightforward but first I want to show you um, the default value of the content disposition header. So going back inside here Let's go inside the PHP script right up here and I'm going to be setting the HTTP response header just like this. I'm going to say header, then I'm going to say content-disposition, so disposition, 
and then that's going to be equal to in line just like this. So right here, uh, this is how you set response headers with PHP. You simply put header and then uh, the header name and then the value. So this right here, inline as the value, is the default value for content disposition, which means if I was to save this and refresh, nothing different happens aside from numbers, of course. So here, with the inline value, um, this means that the browser should uh, display the resource inside the browser window itself. So inline means display it inside the browser window. Now you may have guessed there's going to be one for forcing a download and yes there is and that is called attachment. So let's go in here and make this attachment instead. Okay, I'm now going to save this once again and then go back to the previous file and then once again click on download numbers and now we can see the PHP script has been downloaded. Now it says generate numbers.php. Um, if I was to try and open this, we can see it is simply just um, a plain text file containing the output of the PHP script. So there you go. That's basically how you use the content disposition header, but there is one more thing and that is going to be specifying a file name. So to achieve this, uh, to make this something like numbers.txt, I can simply go back inside here and then after this semicolon, I can say file name just like this, okay? And I can say right in here numbers.txt um, just like that. Okay, um, so now I've set a file name to be the file name to actually use during the download. I'm now going to save this once again and then once again click on this link and now it downloads numbers.txt. Of course, I've got a uh, number one in brackets because I've actually downloaded this resource before. Um, I might just go back inside here and make it something different. For example, let's make this decode underscore numbers.txt instead. Save this and click on it again and now it's got decode numbers.txt. Of course, now opening this works perfectly fine. It opens inside VS Code because it is a .txt file. I also want to show you real quickly here um, th that this is actually uh, working correctly. So just press F12 in your browser or uh, open up your developer tools, go inside the network tab, and then look at the particular request for um, that PHP script. We can see here, this is the last request. So inside here, if we expand this and go to the headers section, in the response headers, we can see we get right here, content disposition, attachment, and then file name, decode numbers.txt. So um, it's working uh, perfectly fine. Um, and now I want to show you how um, I actually achieved um, the image download. So it works in a very similar way. Let's just go back inside here and uh, go inside this images directory. So here I've got basically uh, this view image link, uh, linking to images, then download.php. Inside that download PHP file, uh, we can see we get right here uh, the header once again, uh, same as before, attachment and then file name thumb.jpg. So obviously I've just chosen the same file name as this particular image right here that is going to be downloaded. So let's go back inside here. We can see it simply just reads, uh, reads the file and this basically is going to output the contents of the file um, to, the, uh, to the client. And then I'm simply just going to kill the script right there. And that's basically how it works. So uh, quite straightforward and uh, with this technique you're able to force your users to download a resource. Now, um, I do want to mention uh, once again that obviously um, there are probably alternatives to using this particular um, uh, HTTP header. So for example, um, instead of uh, using uh, this header, you could instead uh, simply go to a href like this and uh, let's just go directly to the actual image file. So I'm going to say .jpg instead and put the actual image right there. So now uh, saving this and refreshing, then clicking on the link, we can see now of course it opens in the web browser. If I was to go back here, 
and then uh, simply put download as an attribute right here. Save this and refresh and now it's going to download the file. So there is definitely alternatives to using this header but it definitely does have its um, have its use cases. Okay, And that is the uh, content disposition HTTP header. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you later.